Good morning. Welcome to Worship at the First Congregational Church of Clarendon. Today is Sunday, November 1st, and our Remembrance Sunday. This Sunday, every year at this time, to remember those who are now gone from our sight, and yet whose love and example has inspired us. I would share with you words that come from John's Gospel, chapter 11, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me shall live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never, but will never die. Do you believe this? For those among us who say yes, we believe that we will one day be reunited with those we love in the presence of God Almighty, and what a glorious day that will be. And it is good for us to remember those whom we loved, mothers, fathers, children, friends, neighbors, each one who is special in your eyes and in the eyes of God. They're different from any other person who has ever lived. And we honor them as we remember them. For they, as we remember them, they're really not gone. For today, we are a family of faith as we share in our grief and loss. And we hold on to God's promises of his grace and eternal life. I share with you that those who are on our list for this year. To remember Bill Engstrom, Frank Anton, Harold and Mabel Engstrom, Larry Buzz Bapti, Joe Brigant, Jenny Byharry, Heather Ann Blair, Francis Burt, Mindy Cronk Carver, Pam Christian, Robert A. Christian and Robert L. Christian, Sherry Sindrick, Lois Kahn, Norm Eging, Debbie Elko, Jerry Gallweitzer, Heather Gallweitzer, and Sue Gallweitzer, Raymond and Alma Gratton, Francis and David Hoffman, Loretta May Holmes, Ray and Helen Kellogg, Charles and June Kellogg, Catherine and Russell Kennedy, Lois Kinney, Carl Kronk, Iona and Ken Kronk, Alan Lindo, Jean Little, James Little, and Phyllis Little, Peg and Ross McBean, Daisy McGee, William Morgan, Don Meyer, Alice Miller, Katrina Kellogg Nick, William Kevin Ogilvy, Charles Orlowski, Dean Peck, Eugene Gordon Peterson, Kathy J. Peterson, Nancy Nan Peterson, Thomas Patronio, Dick Polch, Anna May and Ernie Pollock, Marianne Post, Alter Randalls, Ralph A. Randalls, and Ralph W. Randalls, Red and Dorothy Randalls, Evelyn Randalls Alexander, Manville and Dorothy Rose, Paul Saylor, Harry and Betsy Shepard, da Dale Simic, Gail Soltar, Ida Specey, Al Stanley, Sadie Stanley, Don Starr, Megan Stevenson, Jan Lynette Stewart, Mary Lou Meyer Swindell, Betty and Don Vaccarello, 
Mary and Francis Baccarello, Phyllis and Oren Valentine, Ellen Force, Judith Ann Hunt Ward, Russell James Ward, Julius Watson, Mary Watson, and may we never forget Teeter Grosvenor. All these and more we hold in our deepest esteem and honor as we remember them. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Tender and loving God, you are God of all mercies. We lift up to you those whom we remember this day. Give them peaceful rest until the time of your choosing, when we will all stand in your glorious light, when we will be re reunited as your people to praise your name. Thank you for all we learned from them and for the memories we cherish today. Lord, keep us all safe in your embrace until our Savior returns in glory. For this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let us, as God's people, worship God. Hi, kids. This morning we lit candles to remember people we loved who have died. And to say someone dies means they no longer breathe and they may no longer move. You may have had someone in your family that has died or maybe even a pet. When someone dies, we want to tell others we feel badly for their loss and sometimes we don't know what to say, but that's okay. Just being with someone means a lot, even as hard as that can be while we're dealing with COVID. We can pray for someone who is mourning the loss of someone they loved. We could send a card in the mail. Grown-ups often take meals to a family when there has been a death. You could send a daily text to your friend if they had a death in their family. Or make sure to just give them a call on the phone. You may even have a better idea how to make sure that your friend knows how you care for them through this really hard time in their life. Some act of kindness that you might do. There certainly have been a number of people who have had losses in their family because of COVID this year. It's a bigger number than even grown-ups can imagine across both our country and around the world. And yet, know how much God cares for each one of them, cares for each family who mourns, just as God loves each one of us. And God is sad when we are sad and wants to bring us comfort and his presence and his strength. Let's pray about that for a moment. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you that you watch over us every day. And we think of those who are sad because someone they loved has died. Help us find good ways to offer our love and help them know they are not alone in their sorrow. And remind us that we are always in your care, no matter how long we live or even after we die. Just as Jesus rose from death to new life, so by faith in him, one day we will all be together with you in heaven. And what a glorious day that will be. Thank you, Lord, for all your promises in Jesus Christ. Amen. 
it's so hard that we are again experiencing more cases and yet it was so it was so great to see those of you at the trunk or treat last sunday stay healthy stay safe be kind and we'll see you soon <laughs> bye bye Jesus comes with clouds descending, see the Lamb for sinners slain. Thousand, thousand days attending, join to sing the glad trees pray. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ the Lord returns to I shall then behold you robed in awesome majesty. Those who cheered and mocked and sold you, pierced and nailed you to the tree. Shamed and grieving, shamed and grieving, shall their true Messiah see. Yes, amen, let all adore you, high on your eternal throne. Crowned and emperor fall before you, claim the kingdom all your own. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, everlasting Christ, come. We continue our worship with our time of prayer. And on this Remembrance Sunday, we remember so many lives that have been lost this year already from COVID. The families that have been impacted, the mourning that has gone on and grief for those who are now not with us. And we do not know them all. We lift up also the families of those whose names have been given this morning, as well as those who are on currently on our prayer list. With all these in our hearts and minds, let's gather our thoughts to prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, loving God, you are good and we hold before you the memory of those whom we cherish thanking you that they have been part of our lives even if now they are not we mourn for the many lives that have been lost to covid and we have to wonder sometimes, Lord, why did this all have to happen? Why did this tragedy have to not only strike our own families and communities, but all across the world? What did we do? We always ask that question. Were we somehow at fault that the spreading keeps on going? Have mercy on us, Lord. For other times we feel betrayed or abandoned. Times when we wonder where you are in the midst of our pain. We wonder, are we being punished? But then no, Lord, remind us again how your heart breaks when we are brokenhearted. How you are sad when we turn away from you, when we do not seek you to find comfort and solace. You would lead us through difficult circumstances, teaching us, developing our character, even through those hard times, even as you stand beside us to give us strength. So fill us, Lord, with your love that we may worship you, may praise you for all your blessings. We want to serve you well because you first served us. 
We worship and adore you because you first cherished and loved us. So blessed are you, dear God. Thank you for blessings both seen and unseen and for your promises that the best is yet to come. So Lord, teach us in these hard times how to be kind, how to be generous, serving those who need it, loving those who are lost, standing beside those who mourn. And as we remember those whom we do not now see, we thank you, Lord, that they're safe with you. And as we honor these, our loved ones from the past, may we also put our faith in you to the future, for you are our source of life and hope, both now and forever. Hear our prayers as we pray, as Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians. We are reading from chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. Let me get you a moment. Go find your Bible and find the right page that we might read this passage of scripture together. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with 13. And Paul writes, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. May God bless a reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. As we begin on this Remembrance Sunday, I'd like to read again the first verse of the scripture I just read to you today. And it says, brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. The gospel of Jesus Christ offers hope. And this hope is not just wishful thinking or an alternate reality of our own making. It's real. It may be trusted. It is grounded in the promises of Jesus Christ given to us through God's word. Jesus died. He was raised from death. As Jesus now lives, so we also will be raised to come into the presence of Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
these are truths I believe to the core of my being. And, and yet even saying that, I cannot just bundle it into a neat package as if knowing these truths are going to take away the grief, going to take away all the hurting or pain over losing someone we love. As real as are the promises of God, so is the reality of missing someone who is now gone. We cannot pretend the death doesn't hurt. But what Paul reminds us about today is God's promise of hope. Over the next few weeks, I'd like to be exploring these last few chapters of First Thessalonians. This was a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Thessalonica, um, a city in northern Greece. Today, that city is called Thessaloniki. It is still there. It is actually the second largest city in Greece after Athens. Uh, if you did a Google search, you would read that a visitor may still, were they able to come, uh, go visit Roman ruins, ruins from the Byzantine, Ottoman history, all this time throughout the history of Thessaloniki. Um, however, just a little sidebar note is that in appearance, it's very much a modern European city because a lot of the city center was burned by a serious fire in 1917 and then rebuilt to be quite a modern city. However, back in the day of Paul, Thessalonica, as it was called, um, Paul visited there on his second missionary journey. Uh, he preached there for only three weeks before he was forced to leave because of opposition towards him. And yet, the fledgling church kept going. And Timothy wrote a letter to Paul talking about the perseverance of these fledgling Christians. And so Paul wanted to write to them and give them some further teachings about the Christian faith. So in the letter's opening chapter, Paul prayed for them, thanking them for their faith, for their love, for their endurance, inspired by hope in Jesus Christ. Now the believers in Thessalonica were enduring quite severe persecution. Uh, Paul alludes to this also in the first chapter. And yet, in spite of the suffering, they welcomed the message of faith with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And here they had turned from idols to worshiping and serving the living God and to wait for his Son from heaven, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. And they received the word of God, which is at work in those who believe. But now, taking a little bit from those first words that Paul wrote in, in Thessalonians, I, I'm going to say, first of all, hope takes the long view. Did, did you hear how it said that they were waiting for, their son, for God's Son to come back from heaven? If you see, the problem is though they expected Jesus to return within their lifetime. Um, you see, this letter was written about 17 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And at that point, uh, the believers did not understand why their loved ones had died, or as Paul put it, had fallen asleep. And just as believers down through the ages have waited for Christ's return, so did these believers. And, and they didn't understand why it was taking so long. I don't know about you, but every so often I look into the sky and I think, wow, what if today was the day that Jesus were to return? What it would be like to see Jesus returning from heaven? And, and what an amazing sight it would be to see thousands and thousands of faithful believers ascending to be joined with him. And yet what may seem to us 
to be maybe indeed closing to the end times. Maybe it isn't that way in God's eyes at all. We cannot know the future, but we can wait in hope. And I'm going to say secondly, our, our hope for tomorrow leads us to draw near to the Lord today. And, and this comes from chapter 3, where Paul writes, May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else. May he strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. So what is he saying? By your actions now, by your love that has increased and in overflowing for each other, by God strengthening your hearts, you will be considered blameless and holy when the Lord Jesus returns. So we do, we look ahead to being united with God's saints. And, and we want to be deemed worthy in God's eyes. So what we do today, by the love we show, by the holiness we ask God to give us, we show that we may be blameless when our Lord does return at that day. So hope, it has meaning both for the future as well as for today. We are able to live in hope now because we believe that God has the future well in hand. Uh, that keeps us from despair when it gets really rough, having to be sequestered, having another rise in COVID cases and feeling like this will never end. Hope tells us that the future is not just some random suffering before life is snuffed out. But no, hope, it informs our attitudes, our perspective, and, and now as much as ever. Because we're all in this together, we want to do what we can to help and support one another, to make our love increase and overflow for each other and everyone else. Third, hope gives us strength, lest we be overcome by the loss of someone dear. And this truth is especially meaningful for us on this Remembrance Sunday. You see, Paul was worried for the believers in Thessalonica because some of their brothers and sisters had died. They were feeling betrayed, feeling that why had Jesus not come, and, and thought that their loved ones had missed out on being able to see Christ's return. And, and Paul was concerned lest their grief would rob them of faith and hope in all of God's promises. So, yes, they were expecting Christ's imminent return, but... What about those who had already died? And like any other person, we too grieve over our loss when a loved one dies. We miss seeing them. We miss spending time with them. And yet Paul reminds us that we must not sorrow for those who have made their transition beyond this earthly life. Because for them, all pain and sorrow are gone. That's the truth from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It says, as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. All right, so now as we turn specifically to the verses we read today, Paul gives us a revelation of what the last days will be like when Christ returns. We who are still alive will not go before those who are already asleep. 
but the dead will rise at Christ's command with the voice of the archangel and upon the trumpet call of God. And then we who are still alive will rise together with them and there to meet our Savior. Those whom you love, you will see again like a huge family reunion. Or I think of like a mighty flock of birds. Yet it's us up in the sky. All of us who love the Lord will be with Jesus Will we with all those whom we remember this day, those who are followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this Sunday, we especially want to remember God's words to us of promise and hope. Like the people of Thessalonica, we do not wish to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. We do not wish to grieve as those who have no hope. We want to rest in God's word and be strengthened because our hope rests upon the sure foundation of God's truth. And that's what Paul writes in Romans 15, 4, that everything written in the past was to teach us so that through encouragement, of the scriptures and endurance, we find hope. And the basis of our hope is in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may remember from John's Gospel, episode where one of Jesus' closest friends, Lazarus, had died. And Jesus came to comfort his sisters of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. And Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he will rise in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, yet even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then in chapter 14 of John's Gospel, this just prior to his crucifixion when Jesus said to his disciples, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may be where I am. Now, after Christ's resurrection, uh, he lived, walked upon this earth for another 40 days. And during that time, he promised that he would come back. Uh, then in Acts, it is recorded that upon Jesus' resurrection, excuse me, ascension, two men dressed in white appeared before the disciples. And they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go to heaven. Because God gives us the promise of eternal life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 that if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. Our preaching is useless and your faith is in vain. Those who have fallen asleep, as he puts it, are lost. If our hope in Christ is for this life only, we are to be pitied. But because we trust in God's promises, we know that the conclusion of one's earthly life is not the final end. God says, they who died, they're but asleep, and they will wake up upon Christ's 
return and with us we will all be with the Lord forever. And so with these words of hope and revelation, Paul concludes by saying, therefore, encourage each other with these words. Our present reality is not so great. Yeah, it could get worse before it gets better. And yes, we do remember and celebrate the lives of those whom we named today. But the purpose of our remembrance is, is not just to experience a fresh sense of loss and hurt. It is to be encouraged in the truth of God's promises. It is to be encouraged in hope, the hope given to us in Jesus Christ. We are here to praise and worship our God, who he has made every provision for our future. His love and care do not end with the grave, but by faith in Jesus, it extends until eternal life. So as we remember those whom we do not now see, let us also reach out to encourage one who is suffering through loss. Stand with them in their grief and gently offer them hope, the hope that Christ gives. For by faith in him, we will be with the Lord forever. May God bless you this day. And as we conclude our service for this morning, we say now to the God who by the power at work in us is able to do far more abundantly than we ever could ask or think. Be glory in the church and to Christ Jesus for all generations forever and ever. Amen. God be with you until we meet again.